I hope I get Frank Ocean after I'm going to. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go really fast. Um, and part of that is because I'm nervous. Part of it is because it's my birthday and I got somewhere to be, right? So, <laughs> my name is Jerron Hall. I'm the Director of Partnerships and Operations for the Memphis Music Initiative. I'll talk a little bit about that further. There's lots of wonderful black people on my uh, presentation, by the way. <laughs> because why not, right? Uh, <laughs> so, um, you're going to hear a lot of very high levels, and that's fine because I don't have much time. So at a very high level, Memphis Music Initiative is a five-year funding initiative with some $20 million that seeks to move the needle forward for young people in Memphis, very specifically low-income communities and or communities of color through high-quality music engagement in and out of schools. It's creative youth development in short. Okay, uh, we seek to impact a few things. One of them is the way that young people view themselves, so their self-esteem. Another is the way young people view their ability to change the world, so their self-advocacy. Um, and then also to increase, in, ber increase the number of supportive adults and mentors in young people's lives, right? That's the overarching goal. Okay, and we also believe that the unique musical legacy and heritage of Memphis plays a role in pushing the agenda forward. Uh, you're going to see a grandma in here, and that's going to be halfway for me, so I'm going to try to speed up, okay? So, uh, when we think about collective impact, um, this is definitely something that you could Google, uh, but collective impact is a framework to tackle deeply entrenched and complex social problems. Uh, um, that nonprofit management consultant firm, FSG, has kind of coined the term, um, and it consists of five uh, areas. Number one, uh, and you need to have a backbone organization, and that backbone organization manages the collaboration. Number two, communication protocols need to be in place to encourage a culture of collaboration. Number three, mutually reinforcing activity should occur. Number four, common practices. Uh, common progress measures need to be in place. And number five, it needs to be a common agenda, so at the end of the day, uh, all parties are continually moved forward. So who is this presentation for, right? This presentation is for uh, the individual who is wrestling with those really challenging problems today. It is my birthday, but it's also the anniversary of Dr. King's assassination, yes? Okay, so we have to acknowledge at least that there are many people in the room who have come to Memphis for a reason, right? They're coming to Memphis to make a change. So, uh, I have a few things that I would suggest. Um, so, before and or while you are participating in a collective impact strategy, okay, Grandma! <laughs> Halfway! Um, uh, here are some questions that I hope that you would ask yourself or continue to ask yourself uh, as you do this work and participate because it's Memphis. Number one, what is colonialism? How does it show up in my life? What is my responsibility to address it? When was the last time I looked around kind of taking out the powder and searched for all its fingerprints on my skin and my body and my life? What is oppression? What does it mean to dehumanize? Do I understand that by dehumanizing and or not recognizing the humanity in others, that means that I myself am dehumanized, right? In my so-called liberation, do I just reconstruct the systems of my oppressor? What is privilege? What is co-opting? What are microaggressions? What is misogyny? What is feminism? What is colorism? What is the prison industrial complex? What is stereotyping threat in Memphis very specifically? Do I have any friends who look like me or don't look like me? Why and uh, why not? Are there any black people working in my organization? Are they disproportionately in functional roles? Are they your coordinators, your managers? Are they your senior leaders? Are they on your board? And do they themselves identify with blackness? Why do I ask these questions? Well, because I believe that we need a new starting point. Right? I do a lot of this work around the nation, internationally. We need a new starting point, and it starts with the fundamental assertion that black lives matter, okay? Because if not, if you don't have that starting point, belly, uh, it's going to show up in your decisions. It's going to show up in your relationships. It's going to show up in your thinking. It's going to show up in your bias. It's going to show up in your friendships. It's going to show up in your strategy. It's going to show up in your approach. It's going to show up in your process. It's going to show up even in your ability to recognize the things that you should be looking for, even if you don't know that you should be looking for them. Okay? Uh, and ultimately, it's going to show up in your collective impact strategy. So if that kind of tingle your heart, a little bit, if you were moved. <laughs> this is being recorded, right? 
So I would hope that this could be used as a conversation starter, right? So that you can begin the journey if you haven't already and that you can go and press rewind over and over again and keep asking those questions till there's a point where it doesn't tinge your heart anymore. Okay, thank you.